I'd like to sink my teeth into something that you mentioned, uh, which is the this idea that they're small populations. I think in the in the modern lens, we think of the Vikings in terms of how they were painted in the 19th century, which is these hordes of heathens who descended upon Christendom and ravaged the people, et cetera, et cetera. But we're really talking about a very small group of people. But I think it'd be worth discussing, like, how small of a group are we talking? Because Scandinavia at the time, the population was low. You compare it to, say, France or England and whatnot. I mean, these are, this is, these are, it is a small place. And then they start expanding all over the world. So they're spreading themselves even thinner. So I think it's worth exploring, like, just how small were these groups? And then how, and then how big of an impact, basically, like, you know, how, how, yeah, how big of an impact were these tiny little groups having in proportion or comparatively to other to other groups at the time, right? So the Viking shows up. How big of an impact is is this tiny little group of Vikings having compared to the larger geopolitical uh, landscape? There we go. I can still. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the and that's the no, what well, you've got. You've got you Expendedly, <laughs> it's been better than I. I had I had the weekend with my niece last weekend, and I was just done. <laughs> just done for the next week. Um, in terms of uh numbers, I mean, all you tend to get, as you'll know, is there'll be you know two hundred ships appear off your coast, and we have to sort of do the do the do the math, as you would say. You know, there are forty, sixty people in each of those ships, and uh, you know these are round numbers and exaggerating for for effect. I mean, I just tend to think that it's it's so expensive to maintain uh, arms, it's so expensive to maintain the horses, and horses are really important in the Viking world. I think that's the first thing that the Great Army do, for example, when they get to uh, East Anglia, they, you know, they persuade, you know, the, these, these Anglians to give them horses, um, because horses are expensive. The fodder we're talking about, Terry's talking about logistics as well, think, things like that. So I don't get the impression that you need vast numbers. You, It's kind of like if you've got controls of logistics, and I think probably, you know, if you've got a few hundred people uh, in, in an army and they're all very well armed and they've got horses and they've got ships as well so they can get to places quickly and they're kind of well fed and they're motivated, I think you don't need huge amounts of of people in, a, in, in an army. Um, you know, we never find early medieval battlefields. It's kind of difficult to 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 you know really say this was a big battle, and we can you know extrapolate. Well, actually, there are two hundred people on each side, or there are two thousand people on each side. I think the great army at the extent is going to be in the low thousands, but I think its probable strength is that it can grow. And I think the fact is a bit like the Roman Empire. You know, they're they're you know they're, they're quite you know small C Catholic. They they will take in whatever people, and I think. Their strength is the fact they're a very attractive group of people. If you start off with, say, three or four hundred warriors, I think you could attract probably that again just through your success. So, and I think what you're getting with you know something like the Galloway Horde, when you've got these um, silver, I mean, you can uh, maybe explain to your listeners that if we need more background, but an amazing horde from about nine hundred that was discovered a few years ago in so southwestern Scotland. But it, it's noted for looking very much like it's. From all over, there's a lot of stuff from the Irish Sea region. There are these uh, broadband silver armorings, which are for that, but they they're originally actually developed in southern Scandinavia, and then suddenly from about the eight sixties, they're developed in sort of uh, uh, Ireland. So again, again, one of these links between southern Scandinavia and Ireland. But the thing about these, some of these broadband armorings in this Galloway Horde in southwest Scotland, is that they've got runic inscriptions on them. Ah, interesting. You think, okay, they're going to have runic inscriptions on them. But they're actually in Anglican, uh, Anglian runes. So they're, you know, Anglo Saxons. They're Northumbrians that have written their names on this and are maybe acting like Vikings, whatever, at, at, at that time. So I think that is that was a big, a bit of a game changer when we suddenly thought, because they're all think, oh, people would have joined in and they would have collected waifs and strays and their armies would have got bigger. Um, so if they started small, they, they could have they could have maximized that force relatively quickly. I think things like the Galloway Horde. Are possibly showing that that's actually how that's happening. You know, your Northumbrians in such, so, so, you know, because there's Northumbria extends into so, what is now southern Scotland. So you've got Anglo Saxon kingdoms operating in in Lothian and in, in, in Galloway. And I think if you're if you can get these guys interested in joining you and acting like Vikings and and perhaps depositing hordes that you know everyone would have thought absolutely completely Viking, and then you get this oh, they're 
they're possibly Northumbrian, that I think that's maybe seeing how you can get the impact because it's not just the numbers that you're getting off the ships with. It's the fact that you're probably being able to persuade people quite quickly to join you. So I think, you know, over the course of that summer season, you're raiding, your, your numbers will swell with local warriors. And again, you get that local knowledge in, you get actually this is a place you want to raid, you want to go to this place, Repton, it's really good. It's got lots of fodder in for the winter. And I think that's maybe how that explains how you don't need to have huge numbers. You want to, there's, they would have known the certain amount they would have taken to, to win a battle. But I think, you know, once you've won that first battle, then you're going to have people that are going to be joining your site. 